All right, you have now entered the agency. I'm your host, Agent M. Bay, and I'm here with a fantastic artist, uh, Tommy Mitchell uh, from out of Virginia. Shout out to that. Um, Come on. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just yeah, let's, let's, let's reside on that for a little bit. Um, so uh, so you and I, we met through the, uh, the Something in the Water Festival. Uh, mm -hmm. Officially, I say, I think we, we might have had some things that crossed paths or had some things around, this, you know, happening around the same time, but uh, that was the first time we actually interacted. And I think there was a, a really kind of unique situation to have met you on, uh, which I want to get to that later. This is one of my uh, one sure. of my topics or whatever. Um, but you know, moving you know into uh, some introductions, you just give like you know a little bit of background, more so for myself uh, too, but a little background about yourself, how you got into the arts, um, you know, being from Virginia, what that influence might have been. Uh, man, you know. As a kid, I've always gravitated towards comics, um, cartoons, so on and so forth, just like every other child. But for me, it was one of those things where I just wanted to draw what I was seeing. I, I just wanted to create that. I'm like, how can I, how can I participate? How can I get involved? Um, so, you know, you get older, you start playing sports, uh, you become an athlete and you start collecting cards of that nature. True. So then I was making my own basketball cards, baseball cards, football cards, so on and so forth. And then I made my own comic. And then I'm just drawing, drawing, drawing. That yeah. took over my life. Yeah. As a kid, I always said, hey, my real goal in life is to just draw and play sports. Yeah. Uh, and here we are. Here we are at 37 and life's come full circle. Right. Um, but growing up in Virginia, just, you know, bouncing around um, from Hampton slash Newport News and then going mm -hmm. to school in Williamsburg, um, I kind of got to see not necessarily two different sides of the fence, but just different culture in general. You know, um, the school I went to was predominantly white, so I saw that side, and, and where I lived in uh, Newport News was predominantly black. So um, you just see different things, and, and, and that kind of affects you in a certain way. And, um, you know, if you're smart, you learn from it, and if right. you're really smart, you can you can utilize it and, and, and become, uh, and grow from it and become right. better as a human and, you know, um, share the wealth with other people, so. Sure, sure. Um, so what was like some of your, I know you said like comics were some of your influence. I think I remember mm -hmm. watching one of your videos on, uh, one of your IGT videos. I think I, I, I talked to you about it a little briefly. Um, just talking about yeah. like your mother's influence on um, just kind of pursuing your passion the way you do. Yeah, uh, shout out to my mom. Uh, rest in power, mom. Yeah. Um, she, from day one, she was an educator. Uh, from day one, she'd always said, hey, what are you trying to do? And she knew I just wanted to play basketball. Mm -hmm. So all I wanted to do was play basketball. I wanted to play in North Carolina. So she's like, okay, here's what you do. Your grades are eh. So you want to go to junior college. You want to transfer, take those credits from junior college to North Carolina and then pursue your dreams. So in that aspect, she was always behind me. Mm -hmm. Um trying to give me the game on, hey, if these are your goals, this is what you need to do to get there. And when it came to the arts, uh, she kind of was a little hands off, but she kind of wasn't. You know, she pushed me and said, hey, you know, you should go to this art school um, or, you know, you should do these art classes or get like a tutor or whatever have you. So I remember, <laughs> I remember in Williamsburg, there was this art class, I think it was like sixth or seventh grade. Mm -hmm. And if you do let's say like an intramural sport as a kid, they don't really teach you much. They right. throw you out there, hey, play for an hour. They give you a snack and then you go home. Yeah. So that's how I looked at it with the, the art program. I wanted to learn stuff. And it really was just, hey, you're going to sit here for 30 to 45 minutes. You're going to draw and, you know, we're going to critique it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, eh, this, even at eight, nine, 10, 11 years old, I just didn't think this was like the right thing. Um, <laughs> but... It was something where they wanted me to draw trees. I came in drawing people. Right. So if you see, all I do is draw people. Hey, let's teach you how to draw people better. Right. I don't want to draw no damn trees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, I would be in a landscaping class or right. whatever have you. Um, but it's just one of those things where it's like I had a bad taste in my mouth from um, art school or just being educated from someone else mm -hmm. um and i'm pretty sure i'm getting long-winded here but it's, it's 
even to this day, I'm not particularly fond of uh, being taught. Mm-hmm. Um, not necessarily just being taught from an educational standpoint from the arts, because right. I feel like in the creative aspect, you really just need to learn the basics. And then after that, you go tell your voice, you go, you know, find your voice, share your voice, et cetera. Mm-hmm. I don't really want to make another person's work. I want to make my work. I'm here to right. tell my story, not anyone else's. Um, but yeah, just, just since that time frame, it's like, eh, I'll, I'll do the, the science on my own. I'll go out there and find the information. And, and I kind of treat it with, uh, everything with passion. I just you look at it as accelerated learning. Okay. Right. I've become a better artist in the sense of I can draw my ass off. Cool. Now yeah. what, what else can I do? Okay. I need to become a better painter. I'm going to learn all the techniques I can about painting so I can enhance the drawing aspect. Um, so that's where I've been at now for the last probably three or four years is trying to become a better painter. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can hang my hat on drawing. Um, and I feel like that's a skill I have. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure later in I'll, I'll go, I'll tell you about skill versus talent, but, um, but yeah. Yeah. I'd love to hear about that. Um, yeah. So, so, so really no like formal education in art outside of no. like, like, yeah. So like no. m- middle high school, just kind of let it all go hooping, right? <laughs> Hoop, all hooping. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And even, even still, like in in high school, um, I took art in eleventh and twelfth grade, and I gotcha. damn near failed that. Yeah. And it not it wasn't because I wasn't good; it's just because I took so much time to try to perfect things. Mm-hmm. And uh, now you look at life, and it's like, oh, I take a little bit of time, but I don't sacrifice the quality of the work. Um, you know, I just feel like I figured out the Rubik's Cube where I know the time frame I need to create a 36 by 48, 48 yeah. to 60, whatever have you. Yeah. Uh, but back then it was just like, no, you're, you're late. So you're going to get this grade and blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. And, you know, as a creative, that kind of leaves a sour taste in your mouth. It's like you can't rush yeah. you know, something, you know, yeah. that, that is, to me, it's going to last forever. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, no uh, formal teaching and I always joke around that I, I got my MFA from YouTube and, uh, I hear that. Yeah, you know, I so, hear that. Uh, so, so when would you say like you really decided to pursue the arts as a, as a career path? Uh, about, it's, it's almost 10 years now. I think it was September, September 9th, uh, 20, 2011. Excuse me. I remember there was this piece I made. I enjoyed it so much. And after I was done, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do whatever, um, I'm do, do, do whatever that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's the one. <laughs> I, that, that, I was going to segue one. into it. <laughs> <laughs> that is the one. Uh, yeah. I, I, I felt something so deep with inside me that I was like, you know what? I'm good. What do I need to do to become great? And yeah. I'll do whatever, I'll do whatever I need to do to be great. I'll be whoever I need to be to be great, but this is what I'm going to pursue. And whatever isn't in that path, you know, just can fall by the wayside. And um, yeah, that's, that's been about, I want to say like close to 10 years, but yeah, this is, this is the piece where I'm like, you know what, I'm going to be an artist. I'm going to, I'm going to be a professional or full-time or whatever artist. Right. And, um, and I say that and also mention too, like I get, I don't want to say annoyed. I get frustrated with like uh, just artists in general. I don't want to say younger artists, but they say, oh, you know, I'm an aspiring artist. I'm like, no, if you create, you're an artist, period. You know, I mm-hmm. there's just no other way around it. Um, but yeah, okay. that 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 was the work. Uh, because this piece seems so like, uh, what was I about to say? Outside of your, your general like context of your work, like, yeah, I'm curious about mm-hmm. what this piece might have been, what was about. Uh, yeah, always relationships. Oh, I see always that. I see, relationships. Yeah, um, <laughs> these are some of this is stuff from the Chrysler. Um, the Chrysler. At least that one in the uh, middle looks like like the, the the woman in the middle with the hands up. It looks like a piece from the Chrysler Museum. Mm-hmm. But uh, it, it is. Yeah, I believe it is. I believe. Um, in this, so I I always talk about pivotal points uh, to get me to the next pivotal point, and this was the starting point where this particular style or um, motif that I was trying to look at, it was helping with me with shading. 
Mm-hmm. I thought, hey, all of my work looks two dimensional. How can I become better at, you know, showing tone and depth and so on and so forth? Uh, so I took these sculptures and I was like, well, mm-hmm. I can get all the, the shading and depth in the world from these sculptures because it's, you know, uh, a yeah. sculpture. Yeah. Um, so I just I put it together. I used a song from Blue um, for you, I believe is a song called. But, uh, but yeah, there was this relationship I was in at the time and uh, I was really smitten over this woman and mm-hmm. it was back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And to be honest, she was in another relationship. I was in another relationship, but <laughs> we knew we were supposed to be together and yeah. it was just the whole thing. But, um, but yeah, this is one of those things where it's like, let me, let me, let me figure something out. You know, I always think that the best art comes from experience and, 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 um, just things you're going through in your life at the time at this yeah. at the time was perfect for me because this was like this catapult to me into the game so for sure yeah I remember there was a piece when I was in grad school that I did that like I did it out of frustration of like you know the critiques that you're getting in work and feeling like I was yeah. at some points I felt like I was getting held back from creating because I was always I was told mm-hmm. so much like preparation and research before I created so I was like, when am I ever going to create some pieces that I just want to like get out? And so then like I made a piece yeah. and then my professor walks in the classroom or in my studio and is looking is like, tell me about this. And I was like, really? The one that I like, <laughs> yeah. I, just had to, I just had to get my materials out on some paper and just like, you know, so I, I started to develop like these, 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 you know, these works that I created kind of in the tough where it was like, these ain't for grading, this ain't for class, this is for me. Yeah, And eventually, exactly. you know, eventually it would, you know, surface and show its way through my, my work, but it was just like, I needed that space. And one of my other classmates kind of uh, mentioned that, that she pulled that same influence from me when she was like, yeah, I started working on some stuff on my own because I saw you was doing that stuff. I was like, it, mm-hmm. it was necessary because I, I just had to learn how to compartmentalize that space I was in. Where, like I could create yeah. here uh, for myself and then I can create for, you know, for being graded. And it, you know, kind of worked out for me in that way. Um, so I'm gonna, since I started with the pictures, I'm going to use that from this point on. Um, so I like this picture. I think it's early in your, your, your Instagram, but I really like this picture because it, it yeah. shows just like semblance of the studio practice, the process and how, you know, what we may see generally is, you know, your finished product or almost finished product. But, you know, most people might not know all the tools that you're using to get to the point. Like even seeing that, like, it looks like yeah. a hairdryer there is like, why is that? <laughs> yeah. Know? <laughs> so um kind of you know maybe take us through like through some of your process of how course. You from you know from from you know concept to you know canvas really uh i'll i'll go way back i actually start sure. with the, the piece from prior um mm-hmm. you know that first piece i didn't know anything that's the until this day i feel like i don't know anything <laughs> which is a good thing keeps me keeps me naive and it keeps me humble to keep learning sure. and searching for more. For sure. um, but that first piece, I just framed it. That was it. Drew, frame, boom, done. Yeah. And one of my favorite artists following him on Instagram, he kind of opened up my eyes to doing more with paper. Mm-hmm. So he mounts uh, paper on panel. So I want to say about 2016, I tried my hand at it and mm-hmm. it was a hell of a year. I, I wasted a lot of money with trial and error yeah but i'm glad i did because now i'm at the point where i feel like i can do it and um i found like a full a foolproof method Mm -hmm. of doing so but in this picture um you'll see tape uh paint uh brayer matte medium my little old apple watch um Mm -hmm. the blow dryer my computer some pins and and a brush now to start the process usually i have a rolled um a paper roll and for this piece i want to say it's 36 uh 36 inches around Mm -hmm. so with that paper roll i'll tape around the paper i'll set the paper cut it out uh tape around it and then i'll take the water spray the water on the paper it'll buckle bubble up Mm -hmm. and i'll take that blow dryer and blow dry it to flatten it because if i don't it's just going to keep rolling up and because it was in a tube for so long yeah yeah yeah, um so then I'll take the panel, I'll set the panel on the paper. Well, actually I'll mount the, uh, put the mount me- or matte medium on the panel uh, and then set the paper on the panel, um, lay it flat. So the, um, it can kind of achieve a, a canvas type mm-hmm. um, presentation. Yeah. And then I'll, I'll sketch away and I'm all about symmetry. Uh, you know, everything has to be symmetrically perfect. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can blame my sister and my dad for that. They're both photographers. Oh, yeah. And, you know, just ha- having their eye 
It's like, okay, this has to be just like this. This has to be there, blah, blah, blah. But um, yeah, I'll make sure everything's symmetrically perfect. Then I'll start drawing, chipping away. And um, it doesn't take me too long to draw, uh, but at least getting the the paint on there. Like I said, I'm still learning how to paint and try to become a, ba a better painter day by day. Right. But um, that uh, that's kind of like the final the final thing is is the painting. But uh, but yeah, that 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 to me is the process in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like like I said, I figured out Rubik's cube with that too. Where if I mess up, I can scrape the paper off in about less than an hour, so I can put it back on there, get the sketch back on there, and get right back on the mm -hmm. horse and and keep it moving. So right, that's a good that's a good thing oh. to know. Um, with the with the medium, because I I know I've, I've explored with you know using medium to mount on board before, and I use it in a sense of like yeah. I did some drawings for a show I had back in like 2017, 2018, something like that, and um, I didn't want to use the general like the the, the yeah the, like general methods for framing a, a drawing or put it in a frame or and yeah. you know I was like I, I just use something else, so I built a I built a a frame out of wood. You know, with wood backing or whatever, and then I just mounted it on the uh, the drawing right directly on that wood, and let the wood have like a board or whatever, um, so that I can mm -hmm. still get that sense of. But you know, one of my biggest things has been like I, I come from being an illustrator as well, and so um, wanting to present my drawings as if they were like in the painting space, but then like not having to buy yeah. this framing gets expensive. But with you know, I always say this yeah. like <laughs> really painters, <expensive>. painting. <laughs> I always say it's like painting is expensive up, up front, but it's easier to to present. Whereas drawing is sure. easy to create, but it's it's harder or it's more you know it costs more costly to to present. Um, mm -hmm. And so I, what I was going to say was like, had you, and what were some of your experience experiments with the matte medium to where like do you have do you have to add any like additional water to keep it moist before you put the paper down? Or are you able to put it down uh, before or anything like that? Uh, in in this whole talk, you're going to hear a bunch of sports references, and here's <laughs> here's one coming now. Yeah. I had to run the hurry up offense where you know i laid the medium down and early on i was trying to i was so in a rush to, to get it right i was like okay the medium's down gotta put the paper on it paper down gotta use my braid gotta flatten it out gotta mm -hmm. blow dry it like i just wanted to be perfect every time where now um i don't have to add anything i just got to make sure there's an even enough coat mm -hmm. that way once i put that paper on there i could take my time bring out the pockets or the uh the excess medium to make sure yeah. it's flat so there isn't um any discrepancy on the uh on the work but um to go back to what you said with with the framing versus uh the mounting yeah i think a big thing for me too was being that i work with ballpoint pen you know a lot of people when they saw the work early on i did shows in new york they're like oh this is great you know uh what is this charcoal what is this pencil <laughs> and i i laughed to myself because i knew it wasn't i would tell them yeah. hey this is ballpoint pen they're like oh yeah yeah right no it's not <laughs> so for me transitioning from framing to mounting I wanted people to be up close and personal um, yeah. with the work and see, hey, no, this is real life ballpoint pen. Like, mm -hmm. you can't make any mistakes. Uh, if you do, you know, you start from scratch. And even making mistakes back then, I would just turn them to tattoos. So if you saw a bunch of tattoos on my older work, it was because I just could not stop messing up. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's, a brilliant, it's a brilliant solution, though. You know? <laughs> that shows that artist but, like. But, artist license to do what you want with the work yeah and it's one of those things where when you're when you're starting out and i always say thank god i didn't know any better you it's just a bunch of trial and error it's yeah. trial and error and it's one of those things where you got to be a standard comic and you just have to improv 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 you know you got a heckler cool you're just going to sit there and cower or you're going to mm -hmm. use that to your advantage uh in the show so i would just improv I'm like, okay let me turn this into a tattoo um, you know, these little, uh, what is, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, these little random tattoos that we have now and, and nowadays, you yeah. know, it, it just felt right with, uh, not only the work, but what's going on today in the world. So, okay. Okay. uh, so I'm going to slide to the next one. Cause I wanted to comment mostly on this series. Uh, I think this is the, the series of work that I may have been introduced to you from, um, mm -hmm. I'm, and I just, I know this. nice, nice. And so I know that like, I think when I first heard about your work, it was through Ray Johnson, uh, mm -hmm. and it was about during like, one of the Ray. neon festivals. Yeah, shout out to Ray. Um, but it was during one of the neon festivals. I know I had work in another space, and then like him and Alyssa 
we're both talking about like I think you and Alyssa was supposed to have work in a set in a similar space. You might have like taken your work yeah. out or whatever. But that's when like your name came out came about, and I was just like, mm-hmm. I've never heard of his, never heard of him, or seen his work. And then you know at some point you know it started popping up. You know just kind of how the, the the universal algorithms work. You know. You, you know um, <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I like to learn more about like this series and yeah, of course. And, like the text that you know I, why you implemented some of the text in there and things like that. Uh, so first of all, to 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 talk about the neon fest, like I'm a ghost. Like I, <laughs> I'm barely out. I'm barely like I just all I do is work, 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 yeah. work, work. I've always said since the beginning, you know, if I'm not really successful, it's because I people don't know I, I exist. I'd rather <laughs> you know become better and and work and whatnot, but um, I always feel like I need to campaign and shake hands and kiss babies and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But it's like, eh, you know, I could do that, but I could become a better artist too. <laughs> but um, this particular work, I've always been, even if you go back to the first piece you showed, I've mm-hmm. always been particularly fond of religious imagery. And I also enjoy, um, you know, fashion, fashion photography, so on and so mm-hmm. forth. So I'll, I've always taught, thought how can I find that intersection where I can bring those two things together and this style was the first one I felt comfortable I'm like you know what I'm all right in painting you know the drawing you know that's nothing that I I can do that to the cows come home um so let me get out these ideas that I have Mm -hmm. and I've always felt even to this day the work that I always do it's always two or three years in the making because I have to get the skills and the knowledge and the information and the data to be able to make it. So I wasn't a good painter. If I would have tried to do this early on, it would have came out horrible because I wasn't right. a good enough painter to produce it. But now that I'm a decent enough painter, I can produce this and it, and it could come out how I have in my mind. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm a firm believer, like my mantra when I'm working is visualize and execute. Whatever you have up here, make sure you execute it on the, uh, the canvas, panel, paper, whatever have you. But um, but this style of work, like I said, it's it's me kind of creating my own um, religious, uh, you know, imagery or Byzantine era uh, mm-hmm. style of work, body of work, whatever have you. And um, it, it's it's just one of those things where it's like I wanted to use a halo, I wanted to use Roman numerals, but I wanted yeah. to, to make it modern that way. Yeah, it's something that uh, it fills a void. I always look at stuff like it's. Am I feeling a void? Am I telling my story? You're going to hear a lot of that too. Am I telling yeah. my story or someone else's? Yeah. And for me, I'm always trying to tell my story. Like, I'm not the most religious person whatsoever, but I've always appreciated the imagery and the art mm-hmm. and the decor and the colors um, that it's brought to the table. And I've always tried to, you know, pay homage to that in some way, shape, or form throughout my work. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting you say that because, like, I have a like one of my favorite imagery um, just to see in like in the, in the uh, just in passing out in the world is like steeples in the sky. Like I, there's something about like a, yeah. a large just like sh- triangular mm-hmm. shape shooting up above everything else through the sky, like kind of like a yeah. mountain or something like that. And you know I tie that very much to you know Christianity, but I'm mm-hmm. Islamic, and so I'm always having this yeah. like feeling like regardless of what I grew up raised and, and practiced, like that imagery had, it means something to me that, you know, mm-hmm. it, because it sticks out to me. So I'm always thinking about how, how do I implement that feeling in my yeah. own work? And I, I haven't gotten to it yet. I'm sure it'll come to me at some point, but like every time I see it, I'm like, all right, I either got to make one of my figures feel like that, or it just has, I just have to implement it in like the subject matter. Um, and so like, you know, being as you're saying, like, you can be influenced by something, even if it's not, you know, yeah. representing yeah, your actual lifestyle. And of course, and and then not you know not be you like oh, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to push this idea of religion or anything on you. It's it's the no. imagery that you're attracted to, and that's it. Mm-hmm. Um, and just like the fact that like I think because like you said like it's really it's very contemporary. You have it you know in the style of dress and and the woman, but also in like the the presentation of it, like the text coming over top of it and being like you know a border on the on the work. Uh, and I think I mean these are all like dates I, I believe. So like even in that regard, like the- it contemporizes it by that. It's like it's uh, it's one of those things where, like I said, I, I'm I'm still always learning, and you know, um, when you're when you're younger, when you're pursuing art, you're trying to get into galleries, 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 galleries. Mm-hmm. And in my pursuit, uh, I remember this gallerist told me, "Hey, you know, 
you sign your your work a lot and you put the date on it like the actual date and they're like maybe you shouldn't do that maybe mm-hmm. you shouldn't do that and for me i listen because um i'm always listening for feedback how it can right. become better so on and so forth because and i'm probably gonna trail off here but it's it's two-way street one i'm in the business of selling my work mm-hmm. but i'm also in the business of creating something that i feel needs to be seen um but they're like, hey, don't put the date on there. So for me, I'm like, okay, here's a, <laughs> let me stick it to them and put the date yeah. on there in a different a different way. So going up on the left side is my birth year, 1983. Mm-hmm. And in the middle above her head is my initials TM and then the 11, uh, 11 for numerology. Okay. Yeah. You know, and then the, um, on the right side is 12582. It should be 8-3 for my birthday, December 5th, 1983. But mm-hmm. on the bottom for the 2018, I called myself smart. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to use the last uh, Roman number one and uh, kind of piggyback on my birthday. And it can just do double duty and do uh, 2018 and then 1983 for both of them. So. Fine. Fine. Uh, so I, because we were talking about your work and you're talking about painting, yeah. I, I wanted to pull this in so that, that, you know, they also get to see that, like, this is where the color gets implemented on the work. Yeah. Um, I mean, I even like looking at, you know, early part of your Instagram is just like all black and gray or um, gray scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then like when yeah. I got back to the color, you know, just, I just rem- <laughs> it reminded me, I was like, this is how vibrant these works are. Like, this is how they stand out. Like, you know, reading some of those you know, colors and, and it, it, you know, it, it really amplifies yeah. the work. And so this is just to get a sense of, you know, like this is how color is implemented in the work. So people can see that. And I think I bring it up in a couple of other pieces. Um, people people didn't like that i i was transitioning the painting i was using uh-huh. color so but for me even to this day it's always going to be about the drawing what yeah. what can i do to enhance the drawing so it's in black and white because i want you to know hey i'm really 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 good at drawing yeah but now that i'm smarter i'm wiser i'm not um what's the word i'm looking for i'm not like i don't know i'm just not completely sold on um one thing i can mm-hmm. show you hey i can draw but i can also uh do these magnificent works with color and they're very mm-hmm. vibrant and um it's one of those things where I, I i want you i did it in black and gray because i want you to see it in person mm-hmm. now i do yeah. it in color because hey you know i'm at a different space in my life and uh especially as an artist where people need to see this and yeah. it's 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 very important um and i'm a process guy i've always been a process guy the outcome is great but i want to know how things are put together you know right. what's your work ethic look like how many hours are you putting into this what are you reading what are you listening to and for me now i always look at my page as a learning tool mm-hmm. um because that's how i learned from other artists i'm like okay let me st- let me steal a bunch of these pictures let me save them okay this is how this artist works now i'm looking through their lens right. or now i'm looking through this artist's lens and Sometimes you can't you can't find YouTube videos on that stuff. Yeah. And if you're smart, if you're smart and resourceful, then you're just gonna use this way. Like I have a, a folder of the artists I admire and just their process. Mm-hmm. I can care less about the paintings because their paintings, yeah. that's them. But I want to know how they create, how what what are they, what tools are they using to mm-hmm. to achieve this finished product? And um for me, that's how, you know. I've got to this point I am today. It's just taking all these tools and it's like, okay, if, uh, if, if another sports example, if Kobe wants to be the best player in the world, you're, it's a no brainer to study Michael Jordan. Michael yeah. Jordan's the greatest player in the world. Why would I not study this guy? Yeah. We're same height. We're both play the same position. Right. This guy has laid the groundwork for me. Why would I not use these tools to press on and move this, this position forward? So. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I, in, in the same way, like I, I look at, your page and, and think of like look at your process in the same way and, and like being mm-hmm. able to look at your work is, is you know, super inspirational and motivational whenever thank i'm you. like thank you, you know, i see it i'm like man T- tommy's always working man i i could i could work out a little more <laughs> you know i i like i have three I'm cameras here. like, I, like I, I had an hour I, in an hour i, I saw like, you call them the stooges the stooges yeah yeah, yeah. like I don't know, my camera be messing up but yeah like i was like this is what i'm like i got a project an idea that i've been i've, I've been wanting to work on and i was like i got an hour before I get on with Tommy, I could just yeah. sit here and wait it out and watch YouTube videos or like, this is past the time for me. Like I can do this in, in, in mm-hmm. you know, without thinking. So I was like, I might as well just get started. So I was like, I'm gonna go ahead and get started yeah. in the spirit of I'm about to be talking to Tommy. So let me go ahead and mm-hmm. you know, just get, get back into it. So yeah, like, 
Um, it's something I definitely I remember, admire about you. Go ahead. I, I remember talking to Ray, and I remember telling him, because we were talking about commissions. There we go. And, you know, too, there it is. Yeah. And for most people, depending on who you are, most people don't like doing commissions because uh -huh. it's not fulfilling. And that's fine, but for me, <laughs> but for me, I look at commissions as uh, layup lines or practice mm -hmm. drills, et cetera. That way, once I get to my gallery work or whatever I want to do, I'm still sharp. Yeah. So you know, I'm always trying to learn and and grow because I always feel like in this life, it's always everything's always evolving. You know nothing stagnant nothing stays the same nothing new under the sun so on and so forth but there's it's always a learning process and that's always what i felt is okay yeah i can become a better painter once i become a better painter then what you know right. where, where else can i take this because i don't want to be just one thing yeah. um you know i just want to keep growing and evolving with not only the things i'm going through in my life but with my work yeah um so yeah i i just i'm always searching for what's next you know i could I, I've always thought, hey, I can do portraits, but then there'll be a time where it's like, I don't want to do portraits anymore. I might draw birds or something, or I might draw, you know, skulls. I did skulls for a little bit. I did, yeah, yeah, I I did uh, insects. Yeah. And uh, it was just one of those things where it's like, look, I, I just, whatever's on my heart, whatever's in my mind, I'm going to create it. Whether you gravitate towards it or not, that's one thing. Um, but I have all of these ideas that I want to get out and I want to mm -hmm. see in the world and see, yeah. you know, what other people, excuse me, what other people think of them one, but I'm pretty sure there's someone out there who I could inspire to take what I did and, and go even further with it and create a whole new genre, a whole new yeah. body or style of work from that. Cause that's what yeah. I've, I've done. You know, you just yeah. take something and you improve upon it. That's what this mm -hmm. life is all about. You know, you take something and improve upon it, but, um, but yeah, it's always learning and evolving, always trying yeah. to make the most out of everything I can. Yeah, I just said that to a friend of mine I was talking to recently because he, he had showed me, he sent me like an Instagram page uh, and I went and looked through the page and I, it was somebody I felt like I, I know had seen his work before, but I, didn't, I, I thought I followed him before, but I hadn't. Um, and so he like commented that the person's work like was just like, he just took this one person's like a uh, movie poster design and kind of ran with it. And I was just like, well, one man's experiment could be another person's like whole body of work. It's it's, it's really yeah. easy to do that. You know, it was like, what was what, what, what was the, uh, was it a Jay-Z? Jay Z line or something like that. It was like he made it a hot verse. I hated made it. A made hot it song oh man! Like it was, like, it was as, as as a as a Nas fan. I'm annoyed now. <laughs> that was about Nas. So you made it a yeah, hot yeah, line. Yeah. Made it a hot song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but it, that, in, 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 in respect for Nas, that's, that's I also just yeah, yeah. But I was gonna say in respect for Nas, I just read like an article. Um, something that, D, that was a DJ uh, MC Searches said that it, that like Jay Z like Nas owns a part of Jay Z's catalog. Because mm -hmm. of the sample that they use, so you know, yep. as, a, as a Nas Ether yeah. fan, I, I, I have my oh, retribution yeah. for all these years of people being like, "Yo, Jay," I was like, "Yeah, we Nas got that one." <laughs> Nas, is oh come on, <laughs> uh, hey, uh, it may be over, but the 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 war wages on. Yeah, the people that affected it, it's never over for them. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They'll, they'll talk about this when the cows come home. But wait, did yeah. you hear X Y Z though? Did you get the freestyle? <laughs> Hey, it, it, Meanwhile, they're doing songs ending, together, but, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and 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 fans are still like, but you know, this verse is better. This, yeah, eh, it's whatever, you know. There, and I look at that too in the art world, where uh, if I'm trying to think of the best way to word it, if I'm over something and people are still, I guess maybe that's a thing, like a certain body of work. If someone's mm -hmm. still particularly looking for that style, and I'm over, it's like. I understand, but I'm not that. I'm not in that space anymore. Right. You know, I'm. I've. I've. I did that to. It, it could be a number of things. I did that to get out of my situation. I did that mm -hmm. to. To. Um. You know. To. Speak on a relationship, whatever have you. But that goes back to the point of always evolving and, and learning and, and growing. Where you know I'm. I'm. I'm just in a different space, and I'm always. Um, searching to evolve and grow. So. Yeah, that's always been my like my mantra when it comes to like doing work for myself versus doing work for other people. That's why like I haven't been like I haven't been that interested in like doing commissions because like I do commissions and people approach me knowing what it is that I like to create and want something in mm -hmm. that regard. So I've done those before. Yeah. I'm just like, all right, well, you ask for what it is that I do, and I I, I have fun exploring that content. 
But when I'm asked to just do maybe like a, a simple portrait, you know, it's like, oh, can you do a painting of my daughter for her graduation? It's like, do you want her to have a long neck or do you just, <laughs> or do you just want a painting of your daughter for her graduation? Because I'll just send you to somebody else at that point, you know? <laughs> oh man! <laughs> you know, but like that, that might be do how I do it, or do <laughs> right? I, I I need to know, like I need to set up a questionnaire. It's like, do you want yeah. the person to look like this? Like I've had, I have a woman, yeah. um, a, a patron. I say that um, she knows my work, and she's already told me she mm -hmm. doesn't like she doesn't you know and she doesn't favor the the elongated necks. Like it's not her thing, but she knows she so likes what, what I do. Work. Like she's had some of my work, you know that, that isn't that you know so. She was yeah. like, if you do something that's, you know, you know my style. So if you do something like that, I'm definitely willing to, you know, support and pay. So, you know, mm -hmm. when I get to, you know, I feel like when I get to that point where I'm like, you know, I was like, let me, let me make a piece for her just to see if, sure. if she bites on it. You know, I, you know, it's it's more so like because of the yeah. relationship and not because like I'm trying. If she's like, I just need to do something out of, the, out, of, out of my norm for one, just step out of the, <laughs> the, the, out of my, you know, step away from what it is that I do so I can come back with a new, new energy, you know? Mm. There, one of my friends, uh, we re reconnected, like we used to trade shoes and vintage nice. Nike stuff and whatever a long time ago. He reached out to me and he was like, um, hey, you know, how you doing, man? You know, just making sure you're all right. I want to do the commission of Alan Iverson and, you know, I want you to have free reign. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's music to my ears, free yeah. reign. Like, he's like, look, I just want to draw AI, like, and being from Hampton slash Newport News, it's like, okay, that's a hometown hero. That's yeah. a staple of the community, so on and so forth. So it's like, come on, it's a no-brainer. Um, but as soon as you said free reign, I was like, okay, now I got to make sure. Now it's one of those things where it's like a competition with myself where I don't mm -hmm. want it to look like anything that I'm doing currently, but I also want it to look something, you know, something cool that, you know, you'll appreciate. And, um, you know, I just enjoyed making that piece and, yeah. um I'm not, I always say I don't really do celebrity or, you know, whatever yeah. art anymore uh, because I feel like that's a, um, that's a lane that, you know, I guess it's an easy lane to, I don't want to say success. I guess it depends on how you look at it really. Yeah. Uh, Cause you still have to, no matter what in any of this, you still have to put the work in. Mm -hmm. But for me, I'm just like, it's an easy cop out. It's like, Hey, this, this particular person has a following. If I put mm -hmm. it out there, they're going to gravitate towards it. And then I can just piggyback off their following. Right. Where for me, I just want you to piggyback off or not piggyback, but I just want you to follow my work right. and what I create. Yeah. Um, but Perfectly I'm thankful for that commission. I, I, yeah. It, I'm just, I'm always thankful that people appreciate what I do. Cause I still mm -hmm. feel like uh, a nine year old recreating magazine covers and, and stuff like that. Cause right that's what it really boils down to. I still have that childlike hunger and that obsession, not only about getting better, but just about creating. And, and I always joke around that I don't have an imagination, but I do in the sense because I wouldn't make these works if I didn't. Right. Um, so commission, like I said, commissions, it's double -edged, a double-edged sword, you know? Yeah. But um, but for that particular one, that was, that was one of my favorites from, for some time. Oh man, yeah, these. Yeah, these, I didn't the, realize that was the, uh, my next one. But uh, yeah, I think the full... this is. Yeah, this is when um, I think you, you had a you were participating in one of the artist block shows. Uh, yeah. Kind of esoteric, and that's you know I think that was really the first time that we really had a you know a longer conversation. Mm -hmm. I think outside of like something in the water, and um, yeah. and you were you were bringing this up. I think you were working on this series around that point. Uh, mm -hmm. So you can get it, you know, get into this real quick and just yeah like, talk about that idea. Uh, so in listening to me, I mean, I have like all the ideas in the world because right. I always feel like creativity is as far as the eye can see. I can, this conversation with you, I can create something off of that. I can put, I can have an idea about it, whatever. And I've always loved skulls. I feel like every skull, just the details, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, it's just so much where, Every skull has a story. So I'm like, okay, I could draw a skull, sure. Yeah, I could do that. But what else could I do with this skull? So I'm like, well, let me give you like a tribal mask feel. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I've been looking at insects and exotic insects and the colors and the patterns that they have. And I'm like, okay, this would look cool on the skull. It's a nice little contrasting, uh, contrasting effort. Mm -hmm. And then I've been a fan of graffiti since as long as I can remember. Um, 
just because I'm a big fan of New York City. I'm a big fan of large cities where the graffiti just takes over. Yeah. It's just like you have like the city itself is a museum of just beauty and color and, you know, people expressing themselves. Right. So in my mind, it's going back to drawing those magazine covers where it's like, okay, well, let me create my own magazine cover, CD cover, whatever have you. And I achieve these works from that. And you'll see the barcode. Um, mm -hmm. And it's funny, the barcode, <clears throat> the barcode, uh, I'm gonna tell another story within a story. Sure. So uh, another hometown hero, Pusha T, one of my favorite artists. Um, I, I did a, a drawing of him for uh, for his wife Virginia, however many years ago, mm -hmm. and at the time I was like, okay, I want to have this done before uh, Fear of God comes out because I really wanted to do it for like an album cover. Mm -hmm. So Fear of God came out, didn't have it done. Fear of God two came out, didn't have it done. His first album with Def Jam came out. Uh, my name is my name, and I think I had it ready the day of that it came out. And then I saw the album cover for the album and it was just a barcode. And I was like, oh my God, this is so crazy. It's so fire. It's so, it's so yeah. minimal. It's, it's everything. Right. So then I was like, oh, I got to put barcodes on shit now. Like it's so, it's, uh, and then yeah. just, just seeing that it was beautiful. It was so elegant. And then I thought on the science of it, I'm like, okay, well, one, I'm in the business of selling my art. Um, and then two, if you look at the barcode, when I use it, it's like, okay, I'm selling my art, but I'm also, when you buy this, you're getting a, a piece of me as well. Um, so you're purchasing a piece of me. And yeah, the, the barcode, I remember when I first used it, I used it on a, on a series I did for uh, this art fair in Brooklyn several mm -hmm. years ago. And when I put it on there, I was like, oh my God, this is out of here. This is, this is crazy. Right. And um, then I was like, okay, I want to put a barcode in everything now. Like everything's got to have a barcode. So I did maybe two or three works with barcodes or actually four works with barcodes. And I stopped for a little bit. Mm -hmm. But now the work I'm doing now, I'm going to put them uh, back on there in some aspect because just it's, I like the story it tells. You know, mm -hmm. it's one of those things where you think you're just used to it as a consumer. You're used mm -hmm. to it as a, you're used to a barcode. But if you, you really sit there and do the science on it, it's like, you know, sell or be sold really you know sell or be sold um everything's for sale just you know we're in a consumerism uh yeah. you know world right now and it it, mm -hmm. it really is whatever story you want to make of it right um i told mine but you can use it however you'd like you know whatever your relationship with the barcode is so yeah maybe interested in maybe see like the the like the the, the upgraded version of barcodes, which I think are like um, QR codes. It's, yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's a QR different code. level yeah, of yeah. access where, you know, you can access mm -hmm. so much from, you know, that. And I had a I had a, I had a uh, classmate when I was in grad school. He had a QR code on all of his, at his thesis exhibition, he had a QR code on all of his um, artworks. And if you went to it, it would take you to like a YouTube video would show you like the process of him working on the piece. Oh, or that's pretty cool. Something like that. So it was, you know, he's, understanding he's that. Yeah, right. It was just understanding the, the use of the technology um, yeah. to make it, you know, to where people like it introduce people who weren't familiar with the technology into it to where like at that time, I don't even think I had a phone that I could just like do QR code <laughs> with. And like somebody like I had to, I had to be told that my phone now could, could do it. And like, and that's like normal on cameras now. It's like, oh, yeah, if you just hold your camera up to a QR code, it'll bring it to the website. Oh, yeah. Like, you don't got to have Shazam now anymore. Like, <laughs> so like, hey, if. If you're like me, I didn't get a cell phone until I was like 23. So I just was like, hey, if you can't find me at the gym, at <laughs> work, or at home, then you don't need to find me. So. Right. Time is hitting, man. All right, cool. We, we're right here to this. So I, I want to hear about this. I mean, I was, I was kind of there for some of that process, but I want to hear about like yeah. how this project influenced maybe your, your artistic career path afterwards because it was so far out of, like you, you mentioned, so far out of your, your norm. Sure, yeah. Because, yeah, I remember... Uh, I don't know if you guys remember, like, mm -hmm. I'm always asking questions. And when we had the talk in, uh, yeah. in Norfolk uh, for something in the water, I was like, oh, man, I don't do murals. Like, I just do <laughs> I work on paper. I draw. Right. And they want me to do what? And 
just talking to you guys, I'm just asking like, okay, well, what do you guys do? And, um, you know, what's the timeline and the time frame mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. And I just wanted to do something where it was something true to me. And it was something where, you know, you have hieroglyphs and, and it's one of those things where you're trying to crack the code mm -hmm. of success as an artist is how I, how I put that up there. Um, obviously Virginia, you know, hard around seven cities, uh, where I'm from, but I had so much going on at the time. Yeah. You were uh, moving. Like, yeah, I was moving. I was working on, I did the, the, uh, the Mocha new wave show. Mm. I had something in the water going on. I had a festival or, um, uh, 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 um, art fair in Brooklyn. Uh -huh. all at the same time so mm -hmm. and then i'm working 45 50 hours a week at a at a job yeah so this is this is something i've grown accustomed to or i grew accustomed to at the time where it's like look you want to be this idea you have in your head you have to do whatever to do that to get there so mm -hmm. it doesn't matter that you have to work however many hours as you have all these things going up excuse me focus on what's in front of you so when the mural came up um, I just wanted to, you know, stay true to myself with the Roman numerals, with Virginia, um, with the, with the banner and give you a hieroglyph feel where you can see, uh, my initials, um, the number 11 that I'm always going to use just for numerology. And just, it's one of those things where it's like, look, we're, artists are always trying to crack the code on success. How... Yeah how and what that success is to them totally different story success for me is being able to go back to square one when i first started this and say hey all i want to do is travel play basketball and work now bring it back full circle i'm 37 all i do is travel play basketball and work so yeah. that's that success to me you know mm -hmm. I, I i make money where i can support myself and i can go see the world um you know, I, I still buy shoes here and there so I can buy shoes. But really, I just want to create. I want to create. I want to go see different parts of the world and, you know, put that into work. Um, and thankfully, I've worked hard enough uh, that I can do that for myself and, and not necessarily keep that information to myself either. Because I always feel like there's no, there's no point of me being in this position if I'm not able to share that wealth with someone else. Yeah. Um, because that goes back to the point of, you know, us all pushing this forward, you know, right. taking what I've learned, taking what someone else has learned and, okay, I have this information, this data, now I can move forward to this, this next step. Um, but, but yeah, this, this, this was, this was amazing. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure I told you and Tim was like, I have a, a, a new respect for you guys. Cause I did it. I think everyone had time to do it. Like, yeah. I want to say you guys had like maybe a week or so, whatever. Yeah. I came on like a Saturday night or a Friday night. And I did it like that Saturday, that whole day from like eight to almost eight. And right. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> this is, this is yeah. a lot. Yeah. I, I have a whole new respect for people, for muralists in general, just yeah. obviously for artists, but for people who do murals. Yeah. And, um, but it was one of those things just like, you know what? I'm ready to do another one. Mm -hmm. I've, I've taken the information that I've learned from this one and I'm going to use that and make sure I'm more efficient with my time. And, you know, just, it just was one of those experiences that I, yeah. I'll look back on. It's like, wow, I, I did this and my first one was with a festival for home. Yeah. And now it's like, man, I, I, I can't do a mural unless it's for home. Or I can't do a mural <laughs> unless it's for a festival or for, or whatever but um but nah it, it i'm just i'm blessed to have these opportunities and like i said there's that was a pivotal point for me as well mm -hmm. because um it it catapulted me to the next uh body of work where i used that uh there was a tiffany i, I to this day i don't know if it's tiffany blue tiffany green mm. i'll let y'all debate it uh the tiffany color uh -huh. And uh, a body of work that I did, and um, it, it's kind of one of those things where it's like I used the 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 elements from the mural and put that in a new series or a new body of work. In yeah, uh, yeah, that's what I, that was part of what I was gonna 
you know, it's part of what I was yep. going to ask, like what in, in this mural, because it was so you know, things like things that take you out of your comfort zone tend to generally like bring you back to like focus on how we are right, now that I had to mm -hmm. do this and I was forced to do this. How can I implement that in my, my general practice? And, you know, so I was curious, like how, um, for one, like you mentioned earlier, like you, you know, what was your mastery of painting at this point to where like this whole, this whole piece was painting it and you had no, you know, illustrative elements of it. And yeah. then how that, you know, getting that, that getting comfortable with painting on that, how that influenced how much more comfortable you got in your own work. Uh, the cool thing is like, I learned so much from my parents. Uh, like my dad did 31 years in the Air Force, but he, he painted homes as well. So in coming into this, the mural was like, okay, I have a I have familiarity with painting interiors. Right. Just because I, 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 when I wasn't working for a while, my dad was like, hey, do you want to help me paint some homes and make some coin? I'm like, sure, why not? I get to spend time with my dad and I get to paint homes. Yeah. I, and, and that's one of those things where I didn't know how to paint at all. Mm -hmm. um so that kind of helped me with this situation and even still when it happened i was like hey dad i'm doing this mural can you come out and help me he's like come on of course yeah so not only to be able to do this but to do it with my dad it's like it's it's just humbling it's like you know you yeah. have like i said it's these pivotal moments where in my life there's always something where a family member or my parents are right there with me and and guiding me or helping me and we both don't know what we're doing but we're learning together mm -hmm. and we both knew we were painting but we didn't know the direction i i wasn't necessarily winging it i had a myriad of ideas and um i i wanted them to be one of those things where you know the the people are doing the uh, the selfie whatever yeah. whatever things and i wanted that to be something for Virginia where when you walk to, cause not to digress from the point, but at the time I was showing work in the Mocha. Right. So when you go to the mural, it's like, it's a double whammy for me. You can go in to see my, my, my portraiture work. Right. When you come out or when you go in, you can see my mural right outside as well. Um, so I was fortunate enough to have that experience, but it's, I don't know. I'm uh, I'm weird in the sense that I enjoy it. I I'm thankful and appreciative. But once it was done, I was like, okay, what's the next thing I can do? What mm -hmm. I'm always looking, like I said, what else can I do? Yeah. Now that I have this, it's like, okay, I know what I can do better. I know what I can correct. I know I can become more efficient. I know um, I learned a lot about myself. I know I need to take time to map things out better, or I need to start at this time frame, whatever. And um, like I said, talking to you and Tim and, and Hampton, it's like, yeah. okay, whew, you got to wipe your brow. It's like, man, yeah. this is this is no joke. You yeah. know, if you're going to do it, do it. And thankfully, I don't do anything half fast. I was all in. It's just I didn't know that I had to be all in for like 12 hours straight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm like I said, I'm I'm, I'm very appreciative and thankful that uh, that I had the opportunity to do something for home because that was something that I I have in my mental checklist is like, hey, mm -hmm. I want to do something for the seven cities, yeah. and you know, to be able to do that and check that off, it's it's been a godsend. Yeah, yeah. You can like going back to what you were saying about your pops. I was like, as you were saying it, I was relating it to it to, in some way. I was like. And I couldn't remember at first, like, what it was that I did with my my father or even my family yeah. in that regard as far as the yeah. arts. I knew there was, like, there was something that I did. It's like, I know they come to my shows or, you know, we talked about. Yeah, my yeah, father's, my father, Yeah, like, because my father's my inspiration when it comes to art. Like, it was my first inspiration. Mm -hmm. And so, for me, like, being able to do something with him artistically, I never, I, I didn't know I had the dream of it until, like, the opportunity really came up. And so, it was when he had a project where he's, he's an electrician by trade and he's done all kinds of trades. Like he's, you know, does lawn care and all that too. But yeah. when opportunities come up, he's really a jack of all trades. And so it was a church that you, you play drums for. He's a drummer as well. So the church that you play drums for and they would have, you know, little um, like plays or, you know, 
um, things like that. And so they were trying to get like backdrops done for certain things or whatever. So he was like, yeah, like this woman, do you want me to do a backdrop? And I was like, do you really get the time to do the project? <laughs> um, he was like, he was like, I really don't, but I already got the materials and I'm gonna do it. And he had, you know, he had to come up with an idea for what he was gonna do for it already. Um, but like the time frame that he had to work on it, this is when like one of those hurricanes was coming through the 757, it was supposed to be real bad. So I went up to, I went up to yeah. Richmond to, to stay with them. And I was like, well, while I'm up here, I'm gonna work on some of my pieces. So I brought like two canvases up there, um, preparing for a show that I was gonna do. And then he had this big board just sitting in the house and I was like, he's going to work every day still. And he's got to get this done by a certain time frame." So I was like, either yeah. and I, at this point, I already knew his, like his idea. So I was like, either. I lay this thing out <laughs> or it doesn't get done. So I just started busting it out one day. I laid it out and he came home one day, he checked it out. And then we all spent like, you know, the next day or whatever, everybody just got down and like found paints that we had laying around some of my paints. And we just like all started teamwork. And then my, like, my niece shows up and she want my, my niece loves to paint. So she's like, can I help? So we just, I found like little sections for her Come to on. paint. And that was just one of those, like afterward, I was like, I really like, took the it was it was a proud moment for me to like take the lead because my father respected my craft and my career choice to say I need your help for this yeah and so bring yeah. it and so I was able to take you know my mess like I'm, I'm in there with tape and everything so I was like I'm not gonna sit here and try to like draw this thing out and paint it perfectly I was like I'm gonna tape it down mm -hmm. or use these straight lines and you know knock it out and it, it came out really you know really great and I was like it was, it was a really fun project and I was like man if they don't need this anymore I could put a figure in here and make it my own mm -hmm. you know <laughs> but it was a super fun experience and, and now that I think about it it definitely influenced some other work that I started doing later but um, yeah, having those having those moments like that was another thing that I, I, I can relate. Like having that moment with my father to be like, all right, boom, we're doing this together. Um, yeah. And you know, again, like being able to be like, and for so many years, like during college for me, it was like I would bring my work home, and my pops would be like, he would grade it. You know what I mean? He'd be like, uh, C plus. And that might be a B, B, uh, just a regular B. That's an A minus. And I'm like, I, I was like, nah, my pops can't be like in. He can't be grading me. He's not in school for this. But how can he? But I respected him for it. And I respected him because yeah. at that point, he was still the person I looked up to as far as being an artist. And then now that I've come into my own, like, those questions don't come up anymore. He's like, how did you, mm -hmm. how, how did you pull that? How did yeah. you do that? How did you get that? So, like, yeah, I can relate to that. But um, I wanted to jump into this because it's... of the the, the murals. Oh, I mean, you can, you can you know, get mm -hmm. going to what you're about to say, but looking at the 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 different the separate spaces to exhibit your work at you yeah. know, a larger space kind of mural size and kind of the difference in those experiences sure um i was gonna say it's it's for me it's weird like listening to people who are in the the arts talk about like my work or others work it's like yeah you get paid to do that whatever but i'd rather listen to someone who isn't attached to the work or who isn't who has no familiarity with mm -hmm. what i do because that's that that means a lot to me that that means you know when you see something it just speaks to you you, you mm. immediately build rapport etc so like i appreciate that your dad was giving you bees and he had no you know formal training or familiarity right. with this whatever um but yeah that that's that's always been something that i've 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 enjoyed because i have no familiarity with the arts like i just mm -hmm. create because like i said i feel there's I'm feeling a void or there there's something that when I go to these galleries and institutions, something that I'm not seeing. Right. And thankfully uh, I'm in a time where I can fill those voids. There isn't like anything holding me back. I right. can, you know, um, put my work in these institutions and, and then have the next generation or, you know, when I have kids, have them see, Hey, daddy was, X, Y, Z. Right. Um, but as far as this, uh, this billboard here, this is, uh, when I first moved to Baltimore, um, I lived on the Northeast side of Baltimore. And the way it took me there, I would pass this, uh, this billboard. And mm -hmm. I would always be like, you know, it'd be pretty cool to have my, my little pieces up there. And, Fast forward maybe about a year, maybe close to nine, 10 months. My studio um, is a stone's throw from that billboard. Mm -hmm. So like right now, if I look to my right, I can see that billboard. Nice. So I'm like, you know, it'd be cool to have my work there. And I did the, the, the research uh, on uh, ledbaltimore.com. It's like, you know, it's a little submission process, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, at the time, I want to say the pandemic just started. 
Right. And I already submitted the work, but I'm like, okay, you know, it's not bad. It's not, you know, horrible work, but mm-hmm. it should be up there. Right. In my in my naive mind, hey, it should <laughs> be up there. Uh, <laughs> but then you fast forward a little bit further out, I actually move t- closer to my studio because I'm like, hey, I'm going to be spending a lot of time working and all I do is work. Mm-hmm. So I want to be able to walk to the studio. So I moved and I, was, I lived four minutes away from the studio. I just walked to okay. and fro, to and fro. So then um, the people at LED hit me and they're like, hey, you know, your work will be up from this time frame to this time frame. Mm-hmm. They, the four works that I, uh, that I submitted, they put up. Right. And I want to say I came home from work one day and I saw it. And the mm-hmm. way that I come, like the mirror, the, uh, the billboard's right there on the left. So you have to see it. And it's at a stoplight. Yeah. And I was like, I just got out of the car and I started flicking it up. I was like, oh, yeah. this, this is amazing. Yeah. And at, at the time, it was the day before my mom's birthday. Mm-hmm. So it, it, the story with me and my mom, is, it, it's, it's a very long one. But I, I always say, um, you know, she and my dad always pushed me into doing art. Um, it wasn't traditional methods. Like she would just be like, Hey, work, you know, do what you want to do work. Mm -hmm. My dad would be like, Hey, go to art school. Mm -hmm. And like I said, naive me is like, I'm not going to art school. Why would I want to go learn about how someone else creates? I can care less. I want to tell my voice. And that's a horrible way of thinking (laughs) young, old, whatever have you. But for me, I already knew even from day one doing this, I already knew the trajectory I was going to take and knowing that, hey, I'm not going to go to art school. I'm going to teach myself everything I need to know to make the work I want to make. I wish I would have went to art school just for the community aspect. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, being around other artists, like-minded people, like-minded creatives, et cetera. Yeah. Um, but to, to get back on track, the, um, the, the billboard, like I said, was the day before my mom's birthday and then on her birthday uh you know we celebrated her we had a zoom call and uh you know i surprised her. i'm like hey mom you know my art's on this billboard right outside my studio slash my apartment and yeah ta-da here you go voila you know and uh you know she's it, it wasn't too long after i want to say maybe a few months after um i had an artist talk with the bma and, you know, she watched it. And mm-hmm. it's one of those things where, I, for me, I'm letting my parents know that, yes, I didn't go to school. Yes, I worked all these oddball jobs, whatever. But the consistent was I always kept working on mm-hmm. my skill to become better. And uh, I wanted them to know that all the effort that you put in me, it wasn't for nothing. Right. Um, I had to I had to go this route to not only learn more about myself, but to learn who I'm gonna be in the future with, you know, the success I'm gonna have as an artist that I feel like I'm gonna have. But um in that artist talk, she was like, Tom, I'm proud of you. And at that moment, it's like, okay, yeah. this 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 it it you as an artist, it's very weird because you don't want acceptance and validation, but yet your whole time as an artist, you're looking for acceptance and validation because you're yeah. selling to people and that's yeah. this form of acceptance and validation. Yeah. And for me, I didn't care for the longest, but just hearing my mom say, I'm proud of you, son, like mm-hmm. that meant everything to me. It, it meant that all the shit I was doing was mm-hmm. worth it. And um, yeah, it, it. the funny thing is, you know, when I, when I was doing the artist talk, at least the funny thing for me was, I'm talking, I'm, I'm saying all these things. And she calls me after. She's like, Tom, I like your little performance. I'm like, mom, what? I'm, like, mom I'm, 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 I'm a painter. I draw, I don't, I don't perform, yeah. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that intersection between uh, like how familiar the family or, or your close, your relatives yeah. whatever are with what it is that you do and like the terminology is always so fun. Like, that happens with all my yeah, friends. And like, I'm a little bit probably like naive because I'm the youngest of five. And I just assumed that I am the baby too. Yeah, and I just assumed that everybody older than me and my family just just knows or understands yeah. what I'm, how I'm seeing things. So like when they when they're like, oh, so how do I like how do I do this or or you know or 
mention something like my brother would be like, oh yeah, my brother, you know, he, he's good at this. And I'm like, that's not something I feel like doing though. Like, I don't, I don't feel like doing logos. <laughs> I might be capable. That don't mean I want to do them, you know? Yeah, I need now. you to know like what level I'm operating at so that mm -hmm. we can, uh, you know, things that you offer or suggest are going to make my, you know, make me happy about moving forward in that direction. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, like, you know, speaking of, like, critics, like, my mother's actually become more of a critic of my work now than my father. My father's usually just, like, he's just curious. My mother's, like, paying way more attention. And she, like, she's the one who, like, really pushes me to, like, care about the quality of my work. And she'll comment mm -hmm. on the smallest thing to where I'm, like, I can't say nothing. You know what I mean? It's like, you're right. If I, yeah. if, I if, if you're not breathless, I'm not doing enough. You know what I mean? Like, if you're not like, it's yeah. perfect. I can't say nothing, son. You did it. Like, if I can't convince her of that, then it's like, nah, I ain't doing enough. Like, I gotta, I gotta think that much more now. 